Picking up where we left off in the previous video where we just installed Windows ME, the default display resolution is about 640 by 480. Now that obviously isn't a realistic resolution for what we're doing here. So we've got to figure out a way to make it a little bit bigger. So obviously we're doing this in a virtual machine, so we have limited access to the physical hardware. So let's see if VMware offers some sort of display driver. To do that, we have to install VMware tools, which means we have to insert our virtual CD. Now, if you remember Windows 98 and Windows ME, Microsoft was hellbent on auto running anything that you placed into your CD-ROM drive, and that's pretty much exactly what happened here. We're gonna do the complete install because I have no idea what's gonna be installed here. It's actually really freaking cool that VMware offers VMware tools for DOS-based systems. And Windows, of course, has to alert you before you do something stupid, like try to eject a CD-ROM that's in use. In older versions of Windows, that would actually cause a blue screen of death. Now, after we reboot and log in, we should be able to resize our display so that we have a realistic resolution. Now, I don't want to expect a 1080p resolution, but something like, you know, 720 would be fine too. So we've got VMware Tools installed, and it doesn't look a whole lot different from other installs of VMware Tools, so we'll go ahead and just leave that. So sometimes to automatically rescale your screen, you can just leave full screen mode and go back into it, and it should automatically resize, but it looks like there's some kind of issue. This actually appears to be a problem with VMware, but just to double check, let's go to the display settings. And it looks like I can scale the screen size by pretty much any resolution I want, but my actual screen resolution isn't in here, so it's almost like it's not detecting my monitor. So we'll just use 1400 by 510 for now. And in the advanced settings, it actually looks like this is a legitimate 3D graphics driver with hardware acceleration and everything. That's pretty amazing. So since this is Windows we're talking about here, and reboots tend to fix everything on Windows, let's go ahead and reboot again. And I'll try exiting full screen and going back into full screen and see if that maybe fixes the problem. The problem seems to be that VMware is having a difficult time detecting my resolution for some reason. The error itself isn't coming from Windows, it's coming from VMware, so hopefully a reboot will fix it. And hey, it did! Look at that! Wow, this is Windows ME running on a full 1080p monitor and resolution. That's nuts! Look how small the icons are in the text. It was clearly never meant to be run on a monitor like this. So back in the DOS days when everybody had CRT monitors, screensavers were like the big thing. Everybody ran screensavers. I mean, they sold screensavers even. And Windows 98 and ME came with some really, really awesome screensavers. Now there's some pretty stupid screensavers in here, but let's visit some of my favorite ones. Everybody knew and loved the Maze screensaver. In retrospect, this is actually kind of stupid, but it's basically this. It is a procedurally generated maze and a little first person camera just kind of goes through it. Now the map overlay doesn't have to be there. I put it there, but you would walk into somebody's living room or computer room and you would see this on their computer and be like, wow, this is like totally rad. Another super radical screensaver is the 3D pipes. This one was particularly rad because you could do all sorts of things to customize it, like multiple pipes and multiple colors and different sort of joints and yeah, it was totally 90s. I actually really liked the spooky house one because if you let it sit for a while, all sorts of weird and interesting things would pop up like in the house and witches flying over the house on broomsticks and stuff. It was, it was kind of cool. This 3D block one was kind of cool. I had this one running sometimes. Now there's like eight or nine other screensavers on here, but they suck and we're not gonna look at them. But what we are gonna look at is a screensaver called Johnny Castaway. Now Johnny Castaway is not a screensaver that was packaged with Windows ME. Instead, it was released by Sierra Online all the way back in 1992. Now to my knowledge, Johnny Castaway was never packaged with software or any other operating system. So in order to have the screensaver, you actually had to buy it. For whatever reason, we had Johnny Castaway growing up, and I remember spending hours watching this damn thing. It's sort of a parody of Gilligan's Island, where you have this one guy named Johnny, and he's stuck on this island. The screensaver itself revolves around Johnny going about his regular daily activities. You can see Johnny fish, eat, read a book, get hassled by birds, and the list goes on. So this particular version of Johnny Castaway's screensaver is the original DOS version, so it is actually stuck at 640 by 480. 
You can get a Windows XP compatible version of this, which makes it full screen. So if you've never seen this screensaver, you should definitely check it out. Look at all the cool new ways you can theme and style your desktop. Look, you can change the color and the contrast and the size of the icons and things. You can even change the icons. This sort of customization is really far out. All right, now that we have our screensaver picked out and we have our display resolution figured out, let's see if we can get the internet working.